And I am going to admit these 175 people. Here we go. Welcome everyone. We've got a few more folks coming in from the waiting room here. Thank you for joining our Brooklyn Tweed Coffee Hour with designer Nora Gon. We are so excited to have Nora joining us from the East Coast and sharing her afternoon with us. So we'll just give folks another minute or two to connect and then we will start our chat. <laughs> So Nora, you are joining us from New Hampshire and you are actually at Harrisville where our wool and spun yarns are made, Shelter Loft and Quarry. So yes, I just asked Nora to, to run over to the mill and check on our, our spin <laughs> order. Yeah. <laughs> While she's over there. I'm just about a half a mile down the road from the mill and I'm in the same building as the offices right now. So here we are. So thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. And thank you, Nora, so much for being here with us for our coffee hour and sharing your evening. So here at Brooklyn Tweed, we have declared April to be Nora Gone Month. We are celebrating one of our most favorite designers who is always an amazing inspiration to us with all of her work that she does, whether for Brooklyn Tweed or outside in the rest of the world. And so we have invited Nora here just to chat and share a little bit of her work and just join in our celebration. So I will do a little introduction, I'm sure. Most of you are very familiar with Nora, but in case you are not, I will do a little introduction. I have a wee little slideshow and then we'll, we'll just get to chatting. So Nora, you are in New Hampshire at the moment. You are a New Hampshireian and Rhode Islandian. That is <laughs> I'm sure not the correct terminology for either of those, but there you have it. Uh, I understand that you learned to knit when you were 14. Should I be responding to these? <laughs> right. you, you can nod. Oh, I'm um, nodding, nodding. I also grew up in New York State. But Excellent. So you have that counts too. All over the, the Northeast. Um, and let's see. So I, I have been researching all kinds of interesting facts about you, Nora, so I have all kinds of things to share and, and question. Uh, so you actually have, have been, grew up in an artistic family. Your dad is a Hugo award-winning and sci-fi hall of fame illustrator. Your mom also did sci-fi illustration and crafts illustration. Um, so you have been surrounded by art your whole life, which is amazing. Um, and I understand you also have uh, degrees in biology and art from Brown University. Uh -huh. And uh, so, you, so you've been surrounded by art and uh, did, you have, did you grow up with fiber arts? You're in your family, or did you just sort of independently, when you were in your teens, decide, hey, I'm going to learn how to knit? Oh, I definitely grew up with fiber arts, just not knitting. So my mom, I was in 4-H, but, but before that, my mom taught me how to sew, and my grandmother who lived with us taught me how to crochet, because she was right-handed and mom was left-handed. And she reversed her crochet. So Graham had to teach me that. So sewing and embroidery and crocheting. And then it wasn't until I was 14 and a friend of mine taught me how to knit. But mom was definitely in, in the fiber community. Definitely. That's kind of how it worked out with me too. My, my family all sewed and embroidered and did cross stitch, but nobody knitted. I was like the, I was one of the first knitters. 
Fina in the chat has commented that she loves how everyone on this call seems to be knitting, which is nice. <laughs> Excellent to see, to look out and see everyone's needles working. Let's see. So I have just a wee little, ooh, someone wants to know about your beautiful necklace, Nora. Ah, so I don't know much about these necklaces because I inherited them from my mom. So I think, let's see if we can see them, that she bought them because they were beautiful. Um, but I don't know like the story behind either one there. But I really like them together and I like thinking about her also. She died a few years ago. So all these things are still, well, I guess they'll always be sentimental, but they're especially sentimental right now. And I kind of feel like I'm turning into her. I guess a lot of us do. But um, with my hair being longer and whiter and then her necklaces, you know, I'm turning into mom. So goodness. Um, so you have published, I checked today on Ravelry, you have over a thousand patterns on Ravelry. Uh, you've done over 40 patterns for us here at Brooklyn Tweed with more to come, which we are excited about. Um, I read somewhere that, that you have sometimes published over 60 sweater patterns in a year. That's amazing. That was back in the 80s, 80s and 90s, when I was freelancing for yarn companies and there was no internet, right? Or, else, you know, not in our world anyway. Um, yeah, I would, I would do that many a year, quite a few years there. Wow. That's I didn't knit them all. I had knitters knit them. And I, at that point in my career, I always put them together. I did the finishing. It's amazing what you can pull together with good finishing. Absolutely. Very true. Oh, Leah has asked, so is wearing a Nora Gone design sweater on the Zoom, like wearing a band's t-shirt for their show? Absolutely not. Cause we're all wearing our Nora sweaters right now. So. <laughs> I wish we had pictures of all of them. Wouldn't that be great? It would be. If we had pictures of all thousand, thousand of your, that would be a long slideshow. Even yeah. if it was really no, quick. I meant, I wish I had pictures of all the people on the Zoom who were wearing their sweaters, their Nora sweater. Oh, yes. That's what I meant. Yeah, we'll have to take, we'll have to take screenshots of, of all the, right. all the groups of participants. Your favorite color is orange, I hear. It's, so, it pretty much is. Really I had hard. an orange car. I have the, the orange car I have traded in for, for a gray car, but um, I have an orange kitchen. I have a lot of orange shoes. Um, I can't compete with Gigi and I won't try, but I do love orange. I also love orange. I am, I am an orange fan. Orange fans. Oh. Unite. Let's see. What else can we tell people? Um, so you have published for all kinds of knitting magazines, Vogue Knitting, um, Woman's World, Ladies Home Journal, I believe was your first design as a professional designer. Yep. You had a, had a sweater in Ladies Home Journal. Ladies uh, Home Journal Needle and Craft. Ah. The offshoot. Excellent. At, at 17, you had your first professional design. That's so exciting. But that's especially because of my mother. So she, she was illustrating for that magazine and I had designed something and she brought it in. So I never would have known about that magazine or, you know, how it all were, how the industry worked or anything It had to do with mom. It's always good to have connections. It is. <laughs> uh, you've been the design director at JCA Yarns, the design director at Barocco. You've been on the Brooklyn Tweed design team for four years. You've designed for all kinds of yarn companies, independent magazines. And then last year, you became the editor-in-chief at Vogue Knitting, which is so exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, can I? <laughs> so the first issue that I was the editor in chief of was the, what's it called? Winter 2021. And I had a lot of help from Mary Jane Mucklestone on that because I also was writing another book with Abrams. But together, 
we got the photo shoots all done and the magazine put together. And that is all with an amazing art director, Emily Jones, who used to work at, um, at Vogue in the old days, but not as the art director, as a graphic designer. But her knowledge of the industry and her incredible enthusiasm um, really made everything come together. So now we just finished the photography on the fall 21, what year is it? Um, issue, and that's gonna come out in July. And we have just started the winter 21 issue, which comes out in November. Um, there are a couple changes that I really want to talk about. Like, so because now the industry um, really requires that we have sizes from 30 to, to fit from 30 to 60 bust, we're definitely doing that. And we're showing way a lot of different size models like Brooklyn Tweed does. And I'm really excited about that and like using a lot of different kinds of photography instead of just one studio kind of photography. Um, those are the things I'm most excited about, I guess. The, those are very exciting things. We at Brooklyn Tweed, we've been really, really excited that we're we're getting um, to the point where we're we've been working on developing more size inclusive patterns for quite a while. Uh, but our pattern production cycle is, you know, between eighteen months and two years between right. the time a pattern is you know, designed to the pattern it actually, to the time it actually comes out. So we're, we're finally starting to, to have the, the culmination of this work that we've been doing to release more size inclusive patterns um, and to show them on a wider range of models. So we're, we're really excited about that as well. So yeah, it's, it's a really good thing to see in the industry. So I'm, I'm glad that's something that we're all working on. Yes. Um, and just to let folks who are posting all these really excellent questions in the chat know, we will get to those, absolutely. So please keep posting your questions and we will go through those in a bit. So we're just keeping people on mute because we have so many lovely participants who have joined us. We have over 250 people in the chat right now, which is wonderful. Thank you all for being here. And... Yeah, so we definitely want to get to your questions in a little bit. Ah, uh, goodness, what else? So you had a new book come out this year, which was Twisted Stitch Source Book, which is so beautiful. Thank you. Um, yes, before the chat started, I got really distracted by looking in Twisted Stitch Source Book, and I was like, let's, I'll just read this, and then I'll just hold up pictures instead of... <laughs> That'll be our Zoom chat. Um, so we are, as I mentioned earlier, uh, so all, all month long for the month of April, Brooklyn Tweed is celebrating Nora Gone Month. Just to thank Nora for all her, the wonderful things that she has done for us and for the industry and just to, to celebrate and highlight her work. So we will have all kinds of fun things happening on our website all month long. Um, starting with some pattern discounts, and then we'll have various goodies popping up throughout the month, which I will show you in a few minutes. Have to wait and see what those are. And let's see, I have a wee little slideshow that I'm going to share with you really quickly. It's very short, so don't despair. Um, just to show you some, some fun things and some beautiful things. So yes, we are celebrating Nora Gone and her beautiful designs. So <laughs> as we mentioned, Nora has been surrounded by art her entire life with the, the work of both of her parents in both sci-fi illustration and craft illustration. And you can see that Nora herself has been creating art from a very small age there. These are great. <laughs> I, I went digging through the internet to, to, find, to find many faces of Nora learning to, to knit and crochet and modeling a very stylish crochet vest there. Yeah. Mom uh, made that one. <laughs> showing your degrees in biology and studio art, which I think really come out so beautifully in your designs, with drawing from nature, which I definitely want to 
dig into and ask you all kinds of questions about that in, in a minute. Um, and then just to share a few of the wonderful designs that you have created for us. Every time we get a design in from you, Nora, we're, we're always like the whole team is just blown away. And we like, just all like gather around and look at the sample and we're like, but wait, look at this, but wait, look at this. Like, look how there's a texture in these cables on Bloom. And look at this amazing like hexagonal shape in chain link, but how it, it's, it's a hexagonal shape with an applied texture, but yet it flows so beautifully on the body, which well, that's one of the things that amazes me so much is that you're, you're able to take these complex cable designs or textured stitches, but you always consider the three-dimensional form that it's going on, which, and always work in, you know, clever details that make that work on a body, which is always amazing for us to see. Even with a classic cable, there's always little details to dig into and, and appreciate that just elevate everything. Beautiful textures and your favorite color orange. So I had to put that one in there for heart again, that just came out earlier this year, Deliciosa with this beautiful all over texture, which we love so much. Geiger, of course, with amazing cables, with short row shaping built into the pattern, like everything just flows so beautifully and the fit is impeccable and just blows us away. And then you just throw out a scarf and you're like, oh, by the way, it has reversible cables that are gorgeous on both sides, no big deal. <laughs> and our minds are blown. And so everyone can see all of Nora's patterns on our website of course, that she's done for Brooklyn Tweed and then all of her patterns on her website and on Ravelry. Yes, Geiger, Geiger is, is somewhat Geiger influenced, I would say for sure. With those, those organic mechanical kind of flowing cables. You know how there's a working, well, maybe no, people don't know that there's a working yeah. name. Oh, yes. Geiger. I love the working. I loved the working <laughs> name for Geiger so much. So, yes, please I share that. I remember it, right? I think it was, was it Tyrolean Zombie? Zombie Tyrolean there was, you go. <laughs> was the working title. Oh, Jared. Jared has shared it in the chat. Hmm. Yes. So... <laughs> When, when we get designs in, when we get patterns in from designers, they, they very often have some sort of working title because otherwise everything's just called like, you know, so-and-so's cardigan. So sometimes we get, we get them with, with uh, evocative working titles. So Zombie Tyrolean has definitely been one of my favorite working titles that, that we have ever had on a pattern. And, I think that came up in the design meeting, like that it took four of us to come up with the, that working title, but I loved it. So yeah, that is, that is definitely one of our favorites. Oh goodness, let's see. What else can we, can we talk about? Oh, there's, there's so many things. There's so many things. I understand that you, you are a singer as well, which is something that I did not know, is that you are a soprano. I am a soprano, a painfully high. No, well, they come higher. But um, yeah, I studied voice in high school. Um, I did Gilbert and Sullivan. I was in the Gondoliers and the Mikado and uh, something else I can't remember. Um, in the... Um, in the Hudson Valley, it, so we in Poughkeepsie, we we did that. I was in the chorus of that, and then in college, I did some singing, and then after that, just like to be in touch with the community. Um, most places I've lived, I've been in the chorus, which I'm not the great. I don't have the greatest ear, but I do like to sing. We have quite a few singers at Brooklyn Tweed as, as well. I keep trying to get us to start a, a little chamber choir, but we haven't done it yet. Right. 
Luigi, we need a chamber choir. <laughs> I was in the Mikado also, by the yes. way. Yes. Were you in the chorus? I was in the chorus. I had a lovely, lovely pink kimono. <laughs> nice. Very I'm historic so looking actor. <laughs> A few folks have asked, how did you start designing and how has, how has your design process and your design ideas shifted over the years? Did it, did it go through phases? Did you have different priorities? You know, were you designing okay. around ideas or yarn? I think that that's probably like a book this thick, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, I'll start somewhere in the beginning. Um, so you, you know something about my family being artistic and my mom illustrating for magazines um, that printed knitting patterns. Um, the first things I designed were like wild crocheted vests when I didn't even know how to knit yet. So then when I did learn how to knit, um, and here's the crux of the story I was in tears trying to read pattern instructions and mom was in the book and she, in the bookstore and on the remainder table she saw Elizabeth Zimmerman's knitting without tears and she's like that's for Nora because I was in tears and of course little did she know that that was so much for me that was a perfect book for me to like follow the percentages that Elizabeth Zimmerman set out and then stick your own pattern in here. So it was a really easy way to start designing. And that's, I would say that's how I started designing. I started publishing when mom brought something in and it was published. Um, and then I had some other connections through here, her where I published things. Finally, after I graduated from college, um, Deborah Newton and Marjorie Winter were advertising for knitters and I knew I wanted to know them and I um, showed them my work and they said, well, you should be designing, not knitting for us, but I did both knit for them and designed and they gave me a lot of places to go to really start my career out. I was in Providence then. Um, I don't know about answering the rest of the, how did it change? Okay, so at one point I was freelance and I was living near a lot of places like Burnett and Barocco. Um, I would drive to New York for Vogue Knitting. Um, Classic Elite was in Lowell, that wasn't that far away. So I would work for all these companies and even and see people in person, not all by mail. Um, and then um, I spent some time making up pattern stitches and selling them through an agent um, which I love. My very favorite thing is making up pattern stitches. Somewhere in there, I did a little stint freelancing for Adrian Vitadini, not the yarn line, but the ready to wear designer. And that was all tied in with the yarn line because Marjorie Winter who was, became my mentor, um, had really started the yarn line with Adrian Vitadini. Um, and then I was a design director. Well, you know, some of this, right? The design director at Reynolds. And so everything changes depending on what you're doing, but through most of that, the idea is to sell yarn. So some of my stuff, a lot of my stuff, because it's my natural tendency is kind of to show off, to show off cables that I made up or constructions that are interesting and different, because that's how my brain works. That's what I like to do the most, but still I have always had to pare back and do simpler things, which sometimes is harder to do something really well and simple um, because when you're working for a yarn company, um, it's your idea is to sell yarn. You're like that's what you're supposed to be doing. So I hope that answered the question, but people can ask more pointed questions if they want. That was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I, it's you. You've designed so much that uh, you know it, there would be many, many answers to that question. Right. <laughs> that changed from day to day. I'm sure. But yeah, I mean, to think of it as as in the in the frame of being a designer, um, you know, working for a yarn company with a with a mission that that you know, changes, changes the design process somewhat too. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's see. Uh, some folks are asking, does the pattern come first or does the yarn come first? And I'm sure that's something that has many different answers as well. But do you sometimes find a yarn and you're like, oh, I want to design, design with this yarn or 
Is it generally you're thinking of a pattern and you're like, oh, I need to find a yarn that works with this? So when I'm working directly for a yarn company, the yarn comes first because there'll be a new yarn that year and you need to sell that yarn. But it's good to have a starting spot, definitely. But in my heart, what I love is making up stitches and making that fabric. So for me, what I love most is having the fabric come first. Have it, um, so it, it, having the stitch come first and then finding the yarn and then deciding what the garment might look like. Yeah, we want to know what you, we want to know what your passion is. We want right. to know what you love. We, you know. <laughs> We all know, we all know business is business. Right. We, want to, we want to know about the love. Right. That's, I mean, that's why we're all here really anyway, you know, because we, we all love this stuff. Susan asked, has your background in science influenced your pattern designs? I would say yes, but I would rather hear that answer from you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't know exactly how it has, but I know it has, if that makes any sense. So, um, it's like before I wrote the book, Knitting Nature, I'm sure it was affecting my work and how I think. And, um, but then when I, I saw a science book in the bookstore that was a kind of popular science book and it broke down all these different patterns in nature and suddenly I knew what I wanted to do a book on and that's knitting nature. So there are spirals and there are phyllo, there's phyllotaxis in spirals and other ways and there are hexagons and fluid dynamics and fractals. I don't remember what else. <laughs> it's been 20 years since I wrote the book, but um, that really cracked it open that I was using my love of science. Like this, I, in science, I kind of loved like gee whiz stuff that you would see on Nova, right? Um, things that have to do with ecology and evolution, but also like anything that has to do with shapes. And we didn't study fractals in school. Like that happened after after me, after I was in school. Um, I think Mandelbrot was making the, was uh, working with fractals, but we didn't know about them yet. Um, so that was the book that that really it was obvious that I was thinking both about science and about knitting. But I think that just the way I think about geometry and the way I think, of course, it influences it. I um, so yeah, Knitting Nature came out in 2006, and I remember how exciting that was to see and how fresh that felt, and just that that obvious connection that you were just drawing these shapes and inspiration and just applying them to, to knitting designs and it was just it's like so unlike what other people were doing it was amazing and yeah just to, to see that carried through and evolving through your work every time is, is always really exciting for for us and I'm sure everyone else here as well let's see Jen has posted our a link in the chat to our Brooklyn Tweed Celebrating Nora Gunn page so that folks can see all of the things that we have planned for Nora Gunn Month. And so we also have a few goodies here to show you that we are going to have available throughout the month. So we'll, we'll let Nora rest her voice for a second and I'll show you some goodies that you will be able to find on brooklyntweed.com throughout the month. So we have some pattern discounts going on right now on a selection of Nora's Brooklyn Tweed patterns. And those will change throughout the month. So keep checking back to see which patterns are on a discount. You can save a little on those patterns, which is always fun that we can get an extra pattern. So, but... So that has started. And then tomorrow we have a lovely, exciting, we were talking about, about things that, that smell good earlier in the chat. Uh, and so we have, we have something that, is, that smells good coming out tomorrow. We have a new Brooklyn Tweed exclusive scent of our Tuft Woolens Wool Wash Soap coming out tomorrow. 
It's called Amalfi Grove after the famous grove in Italy. And it is scented with pink grapefruit and citrus and jasmine. And it has a lovely light scent for all your springtime, spring cleaning woolen needs. So check our website for that tomorrow. Angela says she loves tuft woolens. We loved tuft woolens too. She has done two scents for us now. So we have our Oregon Woods scent that came out um, around the holidays last year, which is a lovely woodsy scent, as you might guess from the name. And now we have our new Amalfi Grove scent coming out tomorrow, which is just so lovely and springy and fresh. So check that out tomorrow. Later in the month, we are going to have some amazing kits that Nora has helped us put together. So Nora has done for us this amazing artwork, which we have put on a lovely canvas tote bag. So this is a Noragon exclusive piece of art for Brooklyn Tweed. So with our Nora kits, which are going to be available starting on the 21st, you will have a tote bag, a print pattern for one of Nora's hat patterns. This is Huck, which I am wearing here right now. You'll get your yarn in there. Oh wait, what is this? Could this be a color of dapple that no one has seen yet? Why yes, I think it is. Hmm, that's something to look forward to. And you will get a lovely sample sized bar of a multi grove soap with your kit. Also available, we have Nora's art on a beautiful art print on really lovely heavy paper in this gorgeous gold color with Nora's signature on there, which you probably can't see, but it's on there. So Nora has done this beautiful cable inspired art print for us. And we were saying earlier that this would make an amazing tattoo design. So, you know, you'll have to ask Nora if, if you can use her for art, for your tattoos. Always check with your artist first. But yeah, that, we've seen some amazing knitting tattoos from some Brooklyn Tweed patterns. So we, so we need to see some, some Nora knitting tattoos out there in the world. So if anybody gets one, make sure you send us a photo. So this would make a good one. So those kits will be available starting the 21st and check those out because those are going to be super yummy. And let's see. Also, I have a couple of Nora samples here with me that some folks were asking about. Somebody wanted to know what the orange sweater was. This is fold lines in our Arbor Butte colorway. Let's see if we can zoom him in a little bit so you can see him. Everything's backwards in zoom. There we go. You can see that gorgeous all over texture that Fold Lines has. This is such a great sweater. Jen, you're wearing Rolock, not Fold Lines. Jen is wearing a very, another Nora sweater. I'm wearing Ginsburg, which is an amazing cardigan. And you can see that a little bit. We also have. Geiger here, so you can see it up, sort of almost in person, as virtually in person as we can get. Jen has posted the names of the patterns that we have here with us today. Nora's amazing Vesta scarf with the reversible cables. Really, really amazing stuff here. I don't even understand how you can design reversible cables. Nora, tell us how this works. How does it work? Well, it starts out with a cable that looks kind of like the more normal cable on one side. I hesitate to say it's like the right side, but it starts out with that. And then I turn it over and I see where there are a lot of, there's a lot of stock in it on the quote unquote wrong side. And it start, I start to see like where things could be connected 
and make the wrong side look like a second right side. And then I kind of make that into a chart or two charts because I really like to have an A side chart and a B side chart rather than all in one chart, which is kind of hellish. And the two charts is not hellish. Um, and you can, you kind of just gray out every other line on each chart. Anyway, that, that's a longer, like a teaching conversation. Um, and, and then it has to be refined and like knit a couple times to get details. Like sometimes, I don't think it happened with that scarf, but sometimes with reversible, there is one, I, one stitch I did that took two cable needles. One had to be held in front, one had to be held in back. Um, and something else happened in the middle and then things looked nice on both the wrong side and the right side when you did it this way. So it's just kind of a multi-layer thing. Like I don't have any idea what the other side's going to look like until something's turned over. And then I look at what I can manipulate. So some folks were asking um, if all of these samples were in the group of patterns that are discounted right now. Uh, most of them are. If you don't see a pattern that you're looking for, uh, in the discount group yet, check back because they will be changing. Let's see. Ooh, someone is asking what what's a good pattern for for Nora newbies? Where where should where should new Nora fans start? That's a good question. What about Bloom? Uh, Bloom would be a lovely lovely pattern to start with. I was just thinking that I wanted to knit a bloom for myself and it would be very relaxing and there are only cables every so often and it's easy to read your knitting in it. That's my first thought. That, that's a good one. And who doesn't need a nice cozy cabled turtleneck mm. to wear with our, our sweatpants? Because that's, <laughs> that's what we wear now. Uh, let's see. Someone wants to know, Victoria wants to know, what is your, what's your current obsession? What are, what are you diving into? Could be, could be knitting related or not. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what am I, I think just keeping up with my work with Vogue Knitting is, got to be my obsession I'm not I have like everybody else been baking a little bread um, but I wouldn't call that an obsession because I can't do the sourdough thing I can't, I can't get it out I can't feed it at the right time I can't anyway um uh, a year ago I would say my obsession was um oh I've just for oh my god I've just blanked out on um okay you can help me. Natalie, someone with hand stitching, um, everything. I hand stitched a whole dress. Alabama Channon. Alabama Channon. I was like, wait, <laughs> it's coming. You do it. I saw it in my mind. Right. So I'm starting to get back into that now that the book is finished and I can, I don't have to like knit every evening like I did before the photo shoot. I knit way too much myself, even though I've had loads of experience working with knitters working for me and I like doing that. But sometimes I, you just get into a rut where <clears throat> it seemed easier to knit an awful lot myself. I'm kind of sorry I did it. So well, sometimes you gotta you gotta follow the knitting mojo, and then yeah. Oh, I saw a cable needle question. Oh yes, there was a cable needle question. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of opinionated about it. I love my cable needle, and I see no reason to go through horrible gymnastics to not use the cable needle. And I, it's great if you like to not use a cable needle and are willing to go through all these machinations to not use it. But I really love, I love using like a seven inch double pointed needle or a five inch double pointed needle um, as my cable needle. And then it's great when you, when you lose them, you always have another one, that's really good. But I use a cable needle. Depends on the cable for me. Sometimes I like to have a cable needle. Sometimes I lost my favorite cable needle in someone's couch, and I don't think I've ever really gotten over that. So, that's the advantage of the package of five double pointed needles. That's true, because then you have four more that are exactly the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. Glennis asks, would you say your designs are appropriate for all age groups and body shapes or are some designs more appropriate for younger bodies? There are always going to be a few designs that are appropriate for younger bodies, but I kind of think that the one of the major reasons that people like my work is that somehow I inherently think of myself, even when I'm trying not to, when I'm designing. So I'm like a size 14 and five foot tall. So my shape resonates with a lot of knitters out there. Um, so I think that most of the things I design are appropriate for all ages. I would agree. And as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, you, I, looking at your designs, I always, always see that you always are thinking about the entire garment. You're not just thinking about the texture or the cable or the fabric. It's always the entire package, which is wonderful and why we love your designs so much because, and we, you know, I'm seeing people knit the Brooklyn Tweed and Oregon patterns over the years. And people are so proud and they post their pictures and they send us their pictures so we can see them, which we love, by the way, out there. If you're like, oh, I finished knitting this Brooklyn Tweed pattern. I wonder if anyone will care. Brooklyn Tweed cares and we want to see it. So send us photos or, or tag us on social media because we want to we totally like go gaga over your patterns like in in our chat during the day mary our amazing customer service person will post something in the chat and be like hey look what this customer finished and we'll all just be like oh my gosh it's so great we want to tell them how much we love it so please share your photos because we love them um, and if you have Nora patterns, Nora projects that you have finished or that you're just starting that are in process, pop those up online with our We Love Nora G hashtag so that we can see them and share them because we want to see all of your Nora projects because we love them so much. We totally get excited about your stuff. In case you were wondering, we're not just up here being like, oh, we're, we're fabulous knitters. We're like, no, we want to know what you're knitting. We want to know what yarn you're using, even if it's not ours. We want to know what modifications you made, what size you knit, and who you're knitting it for, and what color. All these things we want to know. Trish has said that BT patterns are suitable for all ages, all sizes, and all genders. We agree. Thank you, Trish. We hope everyone else agrees as well. Uh, Jen has posted... Aha, Jen has posted in the chat, as a special gift to you all for being here today, we have a coupon code BTNORAG15 for 15% 15 off all Brooklyn Tweed yarns today through April 18th. So pop over to brooklyntweed.com and pick up some yarn for a new Nora project with the coupon code btnorag 15 and you will get 15% off. Let's see. I see some, some other votes for cable deals in the Yay. chat. Someone is someone suggests that we should have Nora gone trivia since we have a <laughs> 250 person trivia team here. I think we would win. <laughs> Uh, oh, a couple good questions about uh, developing a pattern and pattern grading people are asking about, which is a good question when we're talking about, um, you know, size inclusivity and knitting companies making a wider range of sizes because um, it is definitely not as simple as just making it making the pattern a size bigger, you know, an inch bigger in every direction. It's, it's much more involved in that. Um, so, yeah, so what are, what are the challenges of taking, taking an idea and then applying that into a pattern and making sure that that pattern is going to work at every size? Again, right. very, it's something that could be a book. But. It's, again, a question that can be a book. <clears throat> but it... 
Okay, I will try to answer this. Um, but, f- but first, I want to talk about how designers who are of my generation, which is making me sound old, but I just turned 60, so that's where we are. Um, early in my career, and for most of my career, I didn't have to do any grading, any sizing. I did the sample size and wrote my designer instructions and the tech editor there expected those instructions to be kind of a mess. Like they rewrote them their way. They expected there to be mistakes. Um, And it was the tech editor for the magazine or the yarn company that did all of the grading. So it was important that whole time still, of course, to be able to think about whether it could go a little bit smaller and quite a bit bigger and where would you add the extra size. And um, so you think about where pattern is placed and make sure that there's a little extra breathing room um, somewhere that makes it easier to size something in a lot of cases, especially for a yarn company where you don't want things to be too difficult. Um, So one of the hardest adjustments for me now that the business model is so different and designers are expected to do the entire grading themselves, um, I don't like to do that. I can do it, but it makes me very uptight and upset. (laughs) And I would rather be making up pattern stitches and then sweaters. So I most of the time will hire someone to do that because at this point, I don't want to do something I don't want to do. Um, how's that for an answer? That is a fantastic answer. It makes total sense. So in one of my previous lives, I was a costume designer. Uh, and, but I always loved digging into the technical side of things. And I had a friend that I worked with quite a bit who was an amazing, like, concept designer. So she would have these amazing wild costume ideas just popping out of her head that she would get down on paper and then it would be my job to figure out how that was going to work. So I can, I can totally say like sometimes you want to be having that, that letting the champagne bubbles out and then letting somebody else figure out how they're going to fit back in the bottle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you make a good pair. Yeah, exactly. Susan says she doesn't want to do what she doesn't want to do either. So she applauds that. Absolutely. (laughs) And yeah, it's fantastic to be able to be able to uh, focus on, on the things that excite you and the things, things that you want to do. Someone, uh, Magda has asked if there are suggestions about how to take care of your Noragon sweaters. And Jen has posted our link to our knitwear care page. Again, check out that Tuft Soaps that's going to be on our website tomorrow because your knitwear will be so happy and smell so amazing. And these last, like I've, I've had a bar that's been going for a couple of years now and I like to wash my hands frequently. So these, these guys will last you. But if you get a couple scents, then you can, you know, have like the springtime scent for your spring knits and then go for the the woodsy scent for your your winter knits and and embrace seasonality. Let's see. We have eight minutes left. So let's see what other questions. Um, Shelly would like to know, do you have a favorite gauge of yarn that you like to work with or design with? Hmm. I think that most of the things I've done over my career would be like at five stitches to the inch. So that's what I'm most versed in. But lately I have been really drawn to like six stitches to the inch. Um, the, <laughs> am I going to blank out on the Brooklyn Tweed yarn? Help me. So that would be DK weight. So Arbor. Ar- no, no, no. So what's below Arbor? I know what it is. Peary. Peary. So this year, Peary, Peary has been more of my favorite. I mean, there's so much detail that you can get in and everything is still just as round and crisp, but you can do so much more with the space with six stitches to the inch. 
So that's my latest obsession. That's a very good point. Smaller stitches, you can get more detail in there. Ooh, so Ooh Susan wants to know if you visualize your patterns in a certain color, if you're not specifically using a specific color for a yarn company. Do you design in orange? <laughs> no. So if I if I sit down to make up a pattern stitch, I'll grab like ecru. Ecru off white. Ecru actually photographs better. So something, but something pretty neutral so that then I could picture it in orange or fuchsia or green. But um something pretty neutral is what I'm gonna swatch in and thus visualize. I don't always visualize things in my head first because it's all about the action of the cable. Like I'll make up a cable on my drawing program. I like to use Easy Draw on my Mac and there's a nice grid and I put all the little symbols in. Um, I sometimes, I come up with things on the graph paper that have not been visualized first. It's more like, what if this did that? And what if that mirror image that way or mirror image that way? Or there are all these variations on a theme. And then I look like, oh, look what I did. <laughs> but I hadn't actually visualized it first. So of course there are exceptions like the stag head pullover. Um, Making Magazine wanted something that was fauna and I could not get the idea of a stag head out of my mind. And so then I didn't know exactly what it was gonna look like, but I did know it was gonna be a stag head. We okay. love the stag head. Jared knit an amazing stag head. Oh, right, yeah. On the back of the sweater. Oh, Jared's gonna go get his stag head. Oh yeah, good. Let's see. And well, that question also answered a couple. Ooh, there's Jared's stag head. Can can people see hey, Jared? Big, Gary. <laughs> so beautiful. We've seen a we've seen some awesome stag heads online as well. Um, well, that that answer also answered a couple of other people who are wondering if you design on paper first or do you design in yarn first. So that's. That was of course excellent. it alternates like sometimes there are things that happen while I'm knitting but the more complicated it gets the more it is on computer first and not on paper whereas 30 years ago everything was on paper and I had to use a copy machine and acetate to make mirror images and loads of tape and I don't know how I got anything done although I do have a few slides in some of my slideshows about that the computer is just amazing with just a simple drawing program nothing too complicated um, and you can do all the cutting and pasting and mirroring and it's all so much easier now indeed it is yes i learned to to draft uh, with pencil and paper and and all of that and i'm like oh i went to i went to art school a little too early now i don't have the, the computer skills so luigi wanted to thank you for being here so let us we should, we should be able to hear you now, Luigi. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Luigi Boccia, and I'm Jared's uh, partner in crime here at Brooklyn Tweed. Um, I just wanted to uh, say, Nora, hmm. you are a gift as a friend, as a designer, and as a mentor. Jared and I have learned so many things from you, from interacting with you and getting to know you better. Perhaps the most important lesson, talent and humility are two sides of the same coin. And you are an embodiment of that. Um, you are so talented and yet always so humble and so open to learning more and exploring more. That's very inspiring. Um, I've also admired, always admired your collaborative spirit you are the one who taught me the English expression, a tide that lifts all boats. And that's who you are, and that's why you are so loved and respected in the industry. Lastly, um, my grandmother, another woman that I've learned a lot from, used to tell me, <laughs> 
Luigi, don't trust people who don't like food. <laughs> <laughs> Nora, I must say that I trust you a lot. <laughs> and I am so grateful to have you as a friend that shares my love and appreciation for good food. And to many, to many more good times together. Um, and so excited to see what you're going to do on this next adventure. We are all in for a treat. So thank you. Well, thank you. You're going to make me cry in a good way. I love you all. Yes, we, we miss you. You must come to Portland again, Nora, when we can all, all travel again. and Come visit us. Well, I'm about to get my second shot, so I'm going to plan. <laughs> we're, we're still waiting for ours out here, so. All right. We'll in. Okay. So we're just about out of time. Um, everyone asked so many wonderful questions. If you didn't get a chance to get your question answered, feel free to reach out to us on social media, or you can email us at info at brooklyntweed.com and we will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Cause we, we wanna know what you wanna know. We, we love sharing what we do. We love, we love sharing the things that we're excited about like every design of Nora's. Um, and so if, there's, if there are questions that you wanna know that you weren't able to get answered in this chat, feel free to reach out to us and we will answer them individually. We want to, we want you to know what you want to know. Thanks everyone so much for sharing your evening with us. Thank you so much to Nora for taking the time to be here with us today. We so enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you, Nora, and hopefully many of the others of you in person again one day soon, hopefully when we're, we're back in the offices and, and can invite people over. So share your Nora Knits with us, send us your photos, say hi on social media, send us emails, and we hope to see you again very soon. Thank you so much and have a great evening.